model steam engines and boilers part 38 making the cylinder supports using the piece of steel angle supplied with the Stuart Victoria kit. Once the main video starts you will be watching heavily edited extracts from my series How to Build a Model Steam Engine, which is a Patreon only project. The full length versions of the episodes in the series contain a lot more information than you're about to see, but this is sufficient to give you a good idea how to do the job. There are some other benefits of being a patron of my channel. You get to download my ebook, The Essential Guide to Miniature Steam, which is completely free. And you can watch the entire series of How to Build a Model Steam Launch, which is over five hours of instructions. I would like to take this opportunity to say a big thank you to all my Patreon supporters. I could not make these videos without your kind help and support. These edited video clips are taken from episodes 22 and 23 of How to Build a Model Steam Engine. This is not the easiest part to make. Look at the shape of it. The bracket shown in this image is from a Stuart Victoria that I already have. And you have to create two of these from the piece of steel angle. There is no margin of error and no room for any mistakes. If you get it wrong, you'll have to buy a new piece of steel angle and start the job all over again. I've painted the piece of steel using some marking out blue, so any marks that I make on it will be very visible, because as we all know, it's really easy to drill a hole in the wrong place. In this clip I'm using a set square to make sure that the piece of steel angle is actually square, and it is. These days when I'm marking things out I use this small cheap vise to hold them, because there was a time when I didn't do it this way and I used to drop the parts on the floor during the marking out process. All I've done at the moment is mark the line which is the length of one of the brackets, and in this clip I'm cutting it on the bandsaw. I do find that this is the best way to cut small pieces of metal, if I clamp it in the vise and lower the blade into place to cut it in the normal way, there's a very good chance that the blade's going to wander. But by controlling the piece of metal with my hand, as you see here, I cut the vertical part of one side and then turned the part over to cut the other side. By doing it this way, everything remains nice and square. You have to have a great deal of respect for any machine tool. And as you can see, I'm keeping my thumbs well cleared of the blade. And in no time at all, the piece of steel angle becomes two pieces of steel angle. The width of the bracket is two inch and an eighth, but I've made this bigger, because I'm going to clean it up in the milling machine, as you're about to see. I'm using a nice sharp end mill, which is quarter of an inch in diameter, and I know that's not very big, but it's safer to use a smaller end mill on pieces like this. And also, I suppose the way I've fitted the pieces of steel angle into the milling vise is a little unorthodox. But in reality, it's very securely held in the machine vise. The only thing is though, I need to go across the work rather than longitudinally. If I move the part in the milling vise so it goes under the cutter from left to right or right to left, then it's going to put some side pressure on the pieces of angle. And there's a slight risk of the component coming loose in the milling vise. But by going across in the way that I'm showing, the pressure on the work is kept to a minimum. I made a mistake with this part of the job. And yes, I make mistakes like everyone else. I'm scribing two lines because this part needs to be shaped, but these two lines should not have started right at the bottom. I got out of it, but only just. To be honest though, this took quite a long time to make because I was videoing the process. If I was to just set to and make one without videoing it, it wouldn't take long at all. Now for the big question. What's the best way to cut out this semicircular piece that sits right in the center of the steel angle? I could do it on the bandsaw and take a load of plunge cuts and then file them to shape. Or I could clamp the part in the milling machine and play with the milling cutter. And if I had a milling cutter that was one inch in diameter, I could use that. Alternatively, I could use one of these. This is a set of fly cutters and the smallest one could be set in a position to cut a really neat one inch diameter or half inch radius hole. I chose to use this wonderful tool. It's called a twist drill. It requires a minimum of setup time, and in the next episode, I'll show you what I did with it. In this clip, to start with, I'm drilling a lot of small holes around the inside edge of the line that are scribed on one surface of the piece of angle. I'm showing this very old fashioned method of producing the item because I am aware that out there in the world, there are many people who do not have a milling machine. I have a milling machine, 
and by the time I've set up a fly cutter in the milling machine, I can have the job finished by using a twist drill. The twist drill that I'm using to do this job is very small, it's only 3 30 seconds of an inch. It looks much bigger on the video because it's highly magnified, but it really is small, and I have to be very careful of two things. One is quite obvious, do not drill too close to the line. All these holes need to be inboard of the line, and two, do not drill the holes too close to each other because as the drill is small, if you drill too close to the previous hole, there is a possibility that the twist drill could break through into the previous hole that you've just drilled and break off. As you can see clearly from this clip, I'm using an old paintbrush to brush away all the swarf so I can see what I'm doing. It's too easy to drill in the wrong place. You may be thinking, well, why didn't I use my bandsaw in the first place? And I could have done. But once again, not every beginner has a bandsaw, but most beginners to metalworking have basic tools like a small junior hacksaw and a file. I don't like to use machining for machining's sake. It's quite easy with a machine. You just clamp everything together and off you go and the machine does all the work. Having said that, I really wish I had a CNC machine. That would make it easy. But no, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to do it a simple yet hard way, if you see what I mean. I'm using a 1 inch diameter grinding wheel in my DeWalt drill. To be honest, it's much easier doing it this way, and it makes a better job. But you have to be careful you don't get carried away and remove too much metal. This is a very coarse grinding wheel, and it's tearing into the metal. And as you can see, it's making quite a good job of it, but I'm not happy with the finish. It's time for a small drum sander in my Proxon motor tool. This allows me to smooth out the undulations and get a really good finish. I'm starting to round off the top part. I need this to be rounded anyway. Time to hold the bracket against the cylinder cover to see how well it looks. And while I'm at it, I've turned the cylinder cover over and I'm marking out from the inside where I'll drill two holes, which is how the cylinder will be attached to the bracket at this end. I'm using the piece of 6mm plywood once again to give me a bit of tolerance when the drill breaks through. The positioning of these holes is critical and they need to be accurately drilled. I'm using a substantial centre drill first and I'm making sure that the centre drill is exactly on the scribed line. After I centre drilled the part, I changed the drill bit for a 3 16 of an inch diameter drill bit and went all the way through. I know this is not proper engineering, I'm really aware of it, but I've got a good eye and I can see where I need to stop cutting, well most of the time anyway. The only problem is that the part gets very hot, and that's why I have a tub of water just off camera to the right. I keep quenching the part in the water which cools it down. Now this part is a bit of a problem, I actually made a mess of it. So much so that I'm going to make another part, I'm not happy with this, it will do for the tutorial. I'll make a pair of these brackets off camera. It's much easier to do it when I'm not using the video camera. Everything was going quite well until I trimmed the ends of the bracket using the bandsaw. I got the angle slightly wrong and the bandsaw touched the bottom edge. The part is actually not that bad, but I like things to be right, so I'm going to make another one. For now though, that's how to make a mounting bracket to hold the cylinder on a Stuart Victoria. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.